Before I get into this off-season episode, I wanted to quickly address the uploading of the Super Bowl episode, so I always try to upload for 4 p.m. Eastern, sometimes the upload takes longer than I expected, so it goes up later, and that's what was supposed to happen with this one, it just took longer, so it went up later, but I also accidentally set it scheduled for Sunday, and never even realised that's why it came out at an odd time on an odd day, and I apologise. Welcome to episode 61 of Fire Cell Franchise and we're here in the off season and let me quickly go into the news before we do anything else to see who's retired because there's been a couple of guys. So Ndamukong Sue has announced his retirement in a heartfelt speech. Eli Manning has decided to retire and Michael Bennett has been forced to retire after suffering a career ending injury and Jordy Nelson has retired as well and I think that's actually it in terms of anyone worth talking about and now let me show you what happened when you know I first took a quick look at what we could do here so I go onto the players ready to negotiate and of course I said I'm happy to let Thomas Morstead go Corey Wong I didn't actually realize was up for renewal that's kind of a loss of some good trade value there but we can't just sign a guy to trade him away that's not realistic Derek Henry of course we do want to resign and that's pretty much it for anyone no, we have to think about re-signing. So, I go for Derrick Henry, and it doesn't really matter how long we say. Say we do the seven years, so it's as cheap as possible. My point is, look at the cap room. Now we're in the off-season, it's taken away that um, reserve for the draft, for the drafted players. So we are left with around six, seven million dollars in cap room, which of course is not a lot whatsoever. That basically means we won't be able to sign anybody in free agency even if we wanted to. It means, you know, if we, we can re-sign players, but, you know, not for a lot. So then the next thing I thought we'd do is take a look at the actual salary stats. Because there are some people I'd be willing to get rid of. Not get rid of, you know, I, I feel bad for saying it that way. But yes, there are some people I'm, you know, I think we can get on alright replacing. So of course we are right now in the off-season of the 2020 season, which means um, the next season will be the 2021 season. And the reason I say it like that is because I got slightly confused looking at this, because I go ahead here, and obviously the first sign it shows you is the 2021 salary cap hit. Now, I don't know if for certain players it's showing the minimum, but for example, Thomas Morstead, who we're not signing, it says a 2021 salary cap hit of 4.25 million and then nothing afterwards. I don't know if that's the, uh, I, I assume maybe that's the franchise tag number. I don't obviously no it doesn't actually have one year remaining because we had to re-sign him but anyway point is let's take a look at the biggest cap hits and the biggest cap hit and I didn't realize it was really quite this bad is Carson Wentz 12.9 million dollars next year that goes up to 15 then to 18 and now I always said the plan was to sign Carson Wentz when other people weren't as interested, when we had the cap space to carry him, and then, you know, load him off to someone who really needed a quarterback, and that is still the plan, and although maybe we would have done that in another year, it was actually always pretty much the plan to do it right now. So that's a guy we're going to be looking at trading away, just like we traded away Logan Tammy last year. We're going to look to do the same here. That saves us $12.9 million in cap space. Taylor Decker is on the team. That's not going to change. We like him there. 11.2 million. We're going to eat that up. Mario Edwards Jr. is the next highest at 9.73. And that is another guy I wouldn't really be too... I think we should look at getting rid of him. Now, we don't expect... Now, we don't necessarily have an immediate replacement for him. However, we of course have on the other side Ryan Tater. Now, correct me if I am wrong, but I believe... Mario Edwards Jr. joined us in 2019 and had 11 sacks and followed it up with 13 and a half sacks. Now that's some big production which means he's going to have plenty of fans that will want to sign him. However, we've always gotten on alright with just one really good defensive... Well, actually we used to get on alright without one really good defensive end. But I think really Mario Edwards Jr. was a little bit of a panic buy after that season we let Trey Flowers go. He didn't want to sign with us again. And so it was a position, it was a needed position and he was there. So we paid him and we had to pay him big. Now we could look at trading him away because again, this is a guy whose salary just goes up and up and up. So does Ronald Darby's and that jumps quite significantly. Maybe we should re-sign him early. Can you even do that? I have no idea. But then we look at some of the other positions and, you know, some of the ones I'm looking at here are guys like Brennan Coleman. 5.9 million is a lot and we probably wouldn't re-sign him, but we're not going to trade him away. That would really come down to, I haven't looked, I haven't scouted wide receivers yet because, you know, wide receivers you scout best once you have the combine results. So I don't know if there's someone we're necessarily interested in, but if that is the case, maybe that's somebody we consider getting rid of. 
or trading away rather. Christian Suki, of course, is on the team and is up for renewal soon. David Onimata would probably let walk. Kevin Pierre Lewis has got one year left. So there's some guys here with decent sized hits that will probably just let walk after their contract expires. And they're not too big that we think about trading them away. Look at Dion Jones though. Now that is some cracking value there. Just the 3.63 million hit. It goes up to a highest of 6.98 million. That's really great. And that means when we let, I think we're gonna just let Kevin Pierre-Lewis go on his way after the next season, you know, just let him find his own place. We're not gonna unceremoniously cut him or, you know, trade him away. That's not gonna happen. But obviously we've got a long-term solution here with a guy who I've lost in the list. Dion Jones, there we go. He's here till 2024. So obviously we're not going to pay extra money to re-sign another outside linebacker when we can use Dion Jones there. And outside of that, there's nobody really eating up a lot of space anywhere. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at trading two players. Carson Wentz, which was always the plan, and Mario Edwards Jr. because, well, I... I see now I'm not sure because again we don't necessarily need that cap space especially once we get the 12.9 million here but it only gets more in coming years and to get rid of him now and I think there's some decent defensive ends right I'm gonna just take a look obviously so first things first let's negotiate Derek Henry's new contract because we want him around we want him for what's he gone he's played five years we can take him to ten years and that makes him an old running back We'll take him to a clean 22 million offer, see if he'll accept that. We put it down a little bit, we've got some influence. Let's see if that works out for us. And that's a good offer, I'm glad to get the deal done. So Derek Henry's going to be sticking around, he is re-signed. That leaves us with $3 million in cap space. Obviously not going to be a lot of fun once we get to free agency. And that's actually everything he had done. We need to move on to the next week before we can do anything. And this will take us to free agency, to being able to trade people. And that's another question now. We take Let's take a look at the free agents with our $4.79 million of cap space and see who we could potentially want. Now, Cam Newton obviously sticks out there as a number one guy. That's not someone we're interested in, though. Now, the difficult thing here, I've said it before, is knowing if these guys are actually the eligible guys. I do believe 26, 27, those are the guys. And that's some big guys. There's a 92 overall strong safety, 92 overall tackle. None of these guys, though, we're interested in. It's not a problem. Really, what we're actually doing is here is scoping out this landscape to see if people are going to want to trade for our players. And can I say absolutely yes, as in if maybe Carson Wentz not as much because there's Cam Newton available. We saw down there um, Andy Dalton's available, but in terms of right ends, there is nothing. There's our first right end, Daniil Hunter, an 83 overall. We've got Mario Edwards Jr. to dangle out there at an 89 overall. And in a starved market, I think we can take advantage of that. So let's take a look at who in the league would need a right end like ours. And that's the answer to that is most teams. But we're going to look at teams with guys under, you know, like 75 overall or so. So taking a look at the teams, I have found some fitting suitors. So for the right end position, We've got the Bills, whose best is a 74. They've got the fourth overall pick. The Cardinals, 74. They probably won't trade with us again after giving us two picks last year. But they got the sixth overall. Cowboys, 72, 20. Dolphins, 70, 19. And then the Jets, 72, but obviously 31 as we beat them in the Super Bowl. And then for the quarterback position, we've got three teams. And that's it. Nobody else has even got a quarterback worse than 82, let alone bad enough. So only three teams in the NFL looking right now. First of those are the Broncos. They have a 76 rated quarterback, the 22nd overall pick. That 76 rated quarterback is also Geno Smith, so they're a perfect suitor. Only just worse than that though are the Panthers who don't have a quarterback. Zip, like, absolutely no one there. Their quarterback right now is a kicker or a punter at 12 overall. They've got the 27th overall pick. And then the Redskins, my favorite here, especially for a quarterback trade. 63 overall and they've got the ninth overall pick ninth overall pick for a quarterback of course is very fitting but 22nd we would settle for as well even 27th but the thing here is that means that obviously we look at the free agents here the panthers have allowed cam newton to go into free agency and we can see there the broncos they are after him so maybe they won't want to trade for Carson wentz of course as they will be getting him so the broncos actually already off that list currently favorites the Panthers don't have a quarterback and they couldn't care less. Which is funny because they've got the 27th overall pick in the draft. That's their first one. You're not going to get a quarterback with that one. And obviously I like that because we play them twice next year. Which will be very interesting. Maybe we'll give them our quarterback 
but for a 27th overall pick, I don't know. So Redskins, our favourite for that one. Of course, like last year, maybe we'll have to, you know, throw in a fourth rounder or something to make it work. And then my favourites for the right end position, I think the Dolphins very likely to want to take Mario Edwards Jr. The Bills, I think a fourth overall pick for a right end is kind of crazy, but that doesn't mean we're going to, you know, we're not going to not go to them and say, hey, do you want him? Because if they do, who am I to argue with that? So what we have this year is a first rounder, just straight up two second rounders, a 44th overall pick, a couple of thirds, so we can use them to move up, and that is it. So three thirds, two seconds, and outside of that, it's completely normal. So let's make some moves. Let's start with Carson Wentz, the quarterback. I think the Redskins are going to want him. Their team needs, their number one need is a quarterback. Are you willing to give up a ninth pick for a ninth overall pick for a proven quarterback? You should be. And you know what? Why why would we offer anything else in return if we can just make a straight trade here and it's close? It says the Redskins are not interested in quarterback. Yes, they are. Look, it's very close. I think a fourth rounder seals this deal. And if I think a fourth rounder will seal it, we start with a fifth rounder, of course. And then I think a fourth will do it. Come on, this is a great trade for you. You've got a 63 rated quarterback. You know you want to do this. Let's make it happen. There we go, we've got ourselves a ninth overall pick, traded for Carson Wentz, who actually, to be fair, did end up helping us out as a backup quarterback, but we can find another backup quarterback somewhere, probably even draft one with a ninth overall pick. So, the rich get richer as per usual, because we can just afford to just trade away players like it's, you know, a little hobby of ours, because at the end of the day, it's a little hobby of ours. So like I said, we're gonna try the Bills right. They're interested in our man here. A right end is in their top five needs. It's their fourth biggest need. So are they gonna wanna do this? So this, of course, is just an outside shot. Maybe they'll go for this. I doubt they will, but we're gonna try, like I said. They're not that interested. But what about for a third round pick as well? Now that's a pretty realistic trade right there. A, you know, starting player for you, and a third round pick, yeah, you give up your first round pick, but you're not gonna get much better than an 89 rated right end out of that. Let's see if you wanna make it happen. You do wanna make it happen. <laughs> we pick up another fourth round, uh, not a fourth round pick, a fourth overall pick. We now have the fourth, the ninth, and our original 32nd. How long can we keep this going on? We keep doing it year after year after year, and everybody keeps giving us their, <laughs> their draft picks. They, they just love it. They love to give us their draft picks. They love to watch us win Super Bowls. I don't understand it, but we're pretty set up for this draft, which would mean we can look at... I'm not going to trade anyone else away now. We've got the cap space. We don't even want to sign any free agents. It just means we've basically bought ourselves the cap space we need to be able to use those two picks. So like I said, I'm not interested in any of this. Let's move on to the next week. So what we actually are interested in is scouting players. So now with the combine, we can take a better look at some people. We can have a look here. We can see... Well, let's... I don't know why he's not being finished. There we go. Bunch of good players here. Now we have a look. We've got the fourth and the ninth. We could already take a new um, defensive end. We could we could take Terrian Kinchin out of Oklahoma. Speed rusher. Looks nice. But no, we're not here to look at that right now. We also looked at running backs as well. We've looked at everything this year. Wide receivers, not so much. So I had a quick preliminary look at all the wide receivers because I thought, why not? I had the points to spend. Now with the combine grades, we can take a look at the ones that are actually worth taking. So this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to look at every single wide receiver. We've obviously already scouted the first part. If their 40 yard dash is better than 4.6, 4.6 flat, we then scout the next bit. And obviously then I know who we've got that's better than that speed. And then we'll take a look at another thing after that. So we took it to the fifth round. We've got 13 plays here. They're all, you know, although last year it wasn't as good. They are all under 4.6. Now we take a look at the second part. And that is the three cone and the 20 yard shuttle combined. So there's the first receiver we're interested in. And to be fair, he's a speed receiver, but only ran a 4.49. Now it's not bad, but it's 32nd amongst wide receivers, but he's a good player. That may be someone we end up picking up. We, yeah, we definitely are going to take a first round, round wide receiver this year. So here we go, looked at all of them. And now these two guys didn't have the right combination of the two, but we're still going to scout both of them now just they're not going to be on the watch list and they're both first round wide receivers it's just how good are they going to be could still be interested in them though i haven't decided who i like the most out of these although an alabama receiver i'm always going to lean towards we'll have to take a look properly though sean john here though out of michigan a speed receiver now he's terrible he cannot catch anything apparently his best stat is a c plus that's a no-go however we've got a couple of third round picks he's 5'9 187 and he did run a 4'3 540 he's got 
Everything else good, he's just, you know, terribly talented in everything else. I think he will probably be around to take. That's the kind of guy I'm interested in. With that kind of speed, maybe we just use him as a returner, you know? But those are the wide receivers looked at, and we've got options here. So I'm very interested in that. And the best combine grade here is Cedric Whiteside out of Alabama. He's a little bit shorter than I would really like, but maybe we can... I don't know. Gerald Hansbard right now is who I like the most, because I like the big receiver. That's what we're looking at, really, is a replacement for the X. Now, it doesn't have to be a big guy on the, that side, but that's just how I like it. But anyway, that's enough of that. London Bentley, he's been getting rave news. He's got incredible combine results. He's not that quick, and we don't need really another not quick guy, 465. But he's got a good broad jump. He's got a good bench press. You know he's going to be an incredible power back. If he happens to be there, we don't want anyone else. I'm not going to not take him, but we want a fast guy. Now, we, where are we going to go again? Kem Navis Grigsby out at Michigan State. It's an option with a 4-3-2, 40-yard dash. You know, some other good stats as well. That A-minus elusiveness I like, plus the B-plus carrying. Those, those combined have me interested. But we've got a couple of guys here to look at as well. And that is it, the final week of the offseason. And we've got trade offers that we had nothing to do with. So Pearson, some people are interested in, and David Onyemata. They're looking to pick up some guys before the draft. Let's see what they're offering, because I'm always ready to listen. So these picks really haven't improved from the last time. They're not much better, although we don't need Jamie and Pearson. That's the thing. So why not just take the best that they're offering and then pick up a right tackle at some point in this draft? Even though, you know, the best we get here is like a 7th round pick. But we don't need him. We haven't really used him at all. We're going to accept this one from the Texans. Uh, David Onyemata, I'm, that's interesting that people are looking for him. He does apparently have an 81 overall here. And nothing really interesting coming. Um, we don't need any. Apart from a 2nd round pick there, they're going as high as. Heck, if you're going to offer a 2nd round pick, we're going to take a 2nd round pick. Even if it is next year. David Onyemata has moved on. One of the... One of the survivors of the original fire sale when we got rid of everybody that was already on the team. And now he also has been traded away. But when you're going to offer us good value, we will take it. And that completes this off-season episode because there wasn't that much going on this time. We obviously traded a little bit, which made it a little bit more interesting. And Jimmy Graham apparently has been traded, which, you know... They're, they're like, wow, but we traded away some big names too. But anyway, that is it for this one. Next time, we will be drafting some new players with some nice picks. And, well, I still have to figure out the draft board and everything. But that'll all be ready for the next episode. <laughs> <laughs>